This video will explain how to account for common, preferred, and treasury stock. When issuing common stock, the primary objectives in accounting are to identify the specific sources of paid-in capital and to maintain the distinction between paid-in capital and retained earnings. Other than the consideration received, such as cash, the issuance of common stock affects only paid-in capital accounts. When a company records the issuance of common stock for cash, it credits the par value of the shares to common stock. Amounts received in excess of par value are recorded in the account paid-in capital in excess of par value. Let's assume this company issues 1,000 shares of $1 par value common stock for $1 per share. The entry to record this transaction results in a debit to cash for $1,000 and a credit to the common stock account for the same amount. To determine the amount, you simply multiply the number of shares issued by the par value per share. Now, let's assume this company issues an additional 1,000 shares for $5 per share. The entry would result in a debit to cash for the amount received, and in this instance, it would be $5,000. We would credit common stock, but only for the par value, which is 1,000 shares at $1. The amounts received above the par value, in this case is $4,000, would be credited to paid in capital in excess of par value. The total paid in capital from these two transactions is $6,000. This represents the contributed capital. If this company has retained earnings of $27,000, the stockholders' equity section of the balance sheet would report $6,000 in paid-in capital and $27,000 of retained earnings for a total of $33,000 in stockholders' equity. Some companies issue no par stock with the stated value. For accounting purposes, companies treat the stated value in the same way as the par value. If in the previous example the stock was no par stock with a stated value of $1, the entries would be the same as those for par value common stock, except the term par value would be replaced with stated value. If a company issues no par stock that does not have a stated value, then it credits to the common stock account the full amount received. In this instance, there is no need for the paid in capital in excess of stated value account. If this company issues 5,000 shares at $8 per share, the entry would result in a debit to cash for $40,000 and a credit to common stock for the same amount. A corporation may issue an additional class of stock called preferred stock. Preferred stock has contractual provisions that give it preference or priority over common stock in certain areas. Preferred stockholders have a priority to dividends and assets in the event of liquidation, but preferred stockholders typically do not have voting rights. The entries for these transactions are similar to the entries for common stock. When a corporation has more than one class of stock, each paid in capital account title should identify the stock to which it relates, preferred or common stock. If this company issues 10,000 shares of $10 par value preferred stock for $12, the entry to record the issuance would result in a debit to cash for $120,000. We would credit preferred stock for the 10,000 shares times par value, or $100,000, and we would credit paid in capital in excess of par for preferred stock for $20,000, which is the difference between the cash received and par value. Preferred stock may have a par value or no par value. In the stockholders' equity section of the balance sheet, companies show preferred stock first because of its dividend and liquidation preferences over common stock. 
The next item we need to discuss is treasury stock. Companies show treasury stock as a deduction from total paid in capital and retained earnings in the stockholders equity section of the balance sheet. Treasury stock is the term that is used to describe shares of a company's stock that it has reacquired. Treasury stock is a corporation's own stock that has been issued and subsequently reacquired or bought back and is still being held by the corporation. Corporations purchase their stock from existing stockholders for a number of reasons. One common reason is to reissue the shares to officers and employees under bonus and stock compensation plans. Other reasons are also provided on this slide. The purchase of treasury stock is typically accounted for by the cost method. Under this method, acquisition of the treasury stock are accounted for by debiting treasury stock and crediting cash for the cost of the shares purchased. Treasury stock is a contra equity item. It is not reported as an asset, but rather it is subtracted from or reduces stockholders equity. Treasury stock will decrease by the same amount when the company later sells the shares. To illustrate treasury stock, let's assume the stockholders equity section for this company has 100,000 shares of $5 par value common stock outstanding for a total of $500,000. It also has retained earnings of $200,000. Stockholders equity totals $700,000 before the purchase of treasury stock. Let's assume on February 1st, this company acquires 4,000 shares of its stock at $8 per share. The entry results in an increase or a debit to treasury stock for the cost of the shares purchased, or $32,000, and a decrease or a credit to cash for the same amount. The paid in capital account common stock would not be affected by this transaction. Companies show treasury stock as a deduction from total paid in capital and retained earnings in the stockholders equity section of the balance sheet. The acquisition of treasury stock reduces stockholders equity. The presence of treasury shares will cause a difference between the number of shares issued and the number of shares outstanding. The balance sheet discloses the number of shares issued, in this example, 100,000, as well as the number in Treasury, which is 4,000 shares. The difference between these two numbers represents the outstanding shares, or 96,000. The term outstanding shares, or outstanding stock, refers to the total number of shares of issued stock that are currently being held by stockholders. This is a perfect exercise to practice recording common and preferred stock, as well as treasury stock. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in another document.